Welcome to our AJAG PD Pod, the place for discussion, debate, and learning about all things accounting. Our hosts, Ivan Tabak and Jonathan Tucker, are CPAs that have been in practice for more than three decades. Together, they bring varying experience and viewpoints to the table, not to mention a little humor, too. Join us as we talk the current issues and hot topics, tap into expert guest insights, and enjoy the odd walk down AJAG memory lane. Before we begin today's podcast, please note, although the educational material within the podcast has been carefully prepared, none of the persons involved in the preparation of the material accepts any legal responsibility for its contents or for any consequences arising from its use. As well, the podcast material and the references contained therein may reflect laws and practices that are subject to change. Advice regarding a particular fact or situation should always be reviewed by a qualified professional. This podcast is produced and distributed by AJAG Professional Development. For more information about AJAG or any of its offerings, please visit ajag.ca. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest podcast entitled, What's Keeping You Up at Night? Welcome. Ivan has a little bit of a cough this week, so... uh, That's what's keeping me up. That's what's keeping him up. My cough. (laughs) My cold. Yes. Yes, you've had it a while. So here we are. What's happening? What are you worrying about these days? Um, I'm going to make it through the next uh, six months. Well, aren't we, uh, aren't we just a ray of sunshine? I don't know why we do this. Well, <laughs> too late to get out. <laughs> it, is, it is. We've done it too long. So, but uh, certainly, I, and I was talking to someone in the uh, profession last week who's well known, who I would not have expected him to be saying, uh, I am so stressed. And uh, anyway, why are you stressed? And he said, because just the pace of new legislation coming out and, and just how how it's affecting all of our clients. Think of uh, uh, the new reporting rules, uh, trusts, trust reporting, um, and then communicating with clients and trying to bring them up to speed on this. I don't remember being, uh, being inundated with so many changes so quickly. You know, it would be, okay, GST came out or a big change in GST, and that would be one time event during the year, and you could, you could prepare for that, but not this, not the... Uh, uh, the pace of change that's coming out. Yeah. Every year. Yeah. Every year it's something, and then you plan for it, and either they backtrack on it. Yeah. Or, uh, or they let it go through. Yeah. And, 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 and kill it, it the next year. Yeah. 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 It's just, it worries me about what's being filed that's going to come back to haunt a client or haunt us in the future. You know, when you think about, um, uh, just filing uh, a rental statement, for example, in the past, where we didn't think about uh, the descriptions that were put on uh, on the seven seven six form. That now, oh, the partnership, yeah, or yeah. co-ownership. What else are we reporting that we don't? Well, that doesn't realize? even matter anymore. No, no, right? That, that was a one time, mm-hmm. a one time thing with the UHT. Mm-hmm. What so else have you come up with lately where there are questions? I think T4s. What about T4s? Oh, the, the new box on the yeah. T4 for the dental benefit. Yeah. The, what was the question? Just the to, question for, was, do you have to only a- a- answer the question about whether there's dental benefits available from right. the perspective of the issuer of the T4 or whether you have to ask the employee whether other people in their family have access to dental benefits? And I asked a number of tax people, and nobody could answer the question. But you got an answer? But I f- finally saw an answer. Uh, that it's only, again, only from the perspective of the issuer of the T4. So and does that, makes that sense. employer? It makes sense, yeah. but yeah, yeah. you can't assume that it made sense until you yeah. had to dig and get an actual answer. Was that, where'd you find it? Uh, was it on the CRA website, or where did you find no, it? No, it was. Uh, uh, a newsletter that that came around uh. from one of the, the the big firms that finally you had to do a little digging. Yeah, I yeah. had to dig for it, and and so for those watching, it's really just from the employer's perspective. You're gonna that's that's what the, they said. It's only no. the issuer of the T four you whether they offer the dental benefits or not. So I mean, it's a simple question why right. well, why did it have to be so hard right because every publication everything i found online even the cra site 
It just said, right. do didn't you have it. access? It didn't say, does that employer offer you access? Right, right, right. So, you know, and again, you can't assume anything makes sense for right. any of these new forms. Right, right, right. Well, that's not uh, a new form, though. That's just a question. Well, new question. Yeah. What else are you seeing? Well, the new T3 reporting. Okay. You know, how, to, how do How you much are you charging? Cl- have you set a, a rate for just the disclosure piece? How much you, what are you going to Oh, I told them at least 6000 a, a return. <laughs> 6000 a return. Yeah, well, it's got to be worthwhile. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward, though, right? It is for most of them. Yeah. But some of them, you, yeah. you know, if it's a regular trust, then, okay, you look at the trust document, you fill out yeah. the trustee, the settler, the beneficiaries, et cetera. Okay. So yeah. what if you have uh, uh, a trust where... Uh, where I, I know I had it for, for myself. All the money my kids got from the time they were born as gifts, so I put it into an account for them. Well, when you're under 18, it's an in-trust account. Who's right. the settler? Right, right. How do you answer that? Right. Nobody can answer that question right. for me. Right. Um, but there's not, a lot of it's just information, right? It's We're not talking about income to be reported or anything like that. It's just Well, it could disclosure. be income to be reported. I've had clients pull out stacks of statements. Recently? Yeah. Well, I sent around questionnaire to them to try you know do you have anything in trust that we've never reported yeah. and i get what were the question what were you asking them on the questionnaire was it a oh, lengthy it, questionnaire or? no no it was just you know do i gave a few That's examples a great idea. you know are, are you on uh are you on title of uh, anyone else's real estate right your parents for right. example for right. for estate planning right. purposes or are you do you have a joint bank account with with somebody where it's only in name, not in um, like a formal? practical, it's not a, you know, right. like it's not your money, right. but your name is just on there. Right, right. Um, Have you come across any good like articles that. on this? Is there anything? Uh, I haven't seen anything. Uh, any you know, any, anything I've read yeah. is vague because nobody knows the answers yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's you know? a couple of BDO articles that were good. Uh, in a series. So if anyone's looking for a, a quick a quick read on that, these are reasonably recent ones that came out that were enlightening. Yeah. So, but uh, but the timing is is tough, right? I mean, the the the, the timing for this, and it, by the way, it's a leap year, so don't count on March thirty first. It's March thirtieth. So, but uh, it's certainly it is certainly compressing the timeline of work to be done, right? So for sure, without a doubt. You know, it's. Um the other issue with the the T3s are are getting the the slips, the T3 slips. Right. You have March 30 March 30th filing deadline, you don't get the slips until April half right. the time. Right, 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 right. What are you supposed to do? Yeah, yeah, no, it's tough. It's a real if, issue. You know, you're going to file either file the the tax return late and have penalty or you, but most cases you're going to want to flow the income out. Right. So you're going to file the T3 slips late. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Or you f- do something and then you have to amend. Uh, are there any other checklists that you're sending out new this year to clients or anything just to, what about your tax checklist this year? Are you, do you send out a tax I checklist? I used to send out a tax checklist yeah. and all that happened was they printed it out and sent it back, un, oh. you know, without completing it yeah. with their tax stuff. I see, I always, so I, I, I just stopped doing I, that. I send it out as a risk mitigation process. If somebody's not going to fill fill in, take the time to fill in a tax checklist yeah. and I'll keep that in my file and if... They come back and say, how did you miss this? Well, you didn't have enough, you didn't take the time to fill out a, a, a slip that's on you. So every one of our files, we have a, a tax checklist, yeah. whether it's repeated or not, so or whether it's completed or not. So. A la- last year I sent out, just uh, not a formal thing, but I, I emailed everybody for every file, just with a few specific questions for things that were new. Right. Like the... Um, uh, that Ontario credit for um, oh the vacation the staycation, staycation. credit yeah, yeah so I just you know put it out I don't yeah. want anybody to tell come back and say why didn't you tell me about it or ask me about it yeah 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 so it was that it uh, I put in a question on foreign foreign assets right in there right uh, and uh, and I had questions trying to get at UHT related yeah. filings which are not relevant anymore but I I did send a short well they're know, relevant short from the from the municipal non-resident. or yeah no, so I'm the municipal saying. ones yeah but well. we don't yeah generally well, I did some of those sending them yeah yeah but I'm not chasing the now municipal ones like I'm not chasing the rates the rate for Toronto now is up to three percent yeah but have you seen anybody that had to pay uh no no 
No, no, it's I mean, crazy. I, I don't know how many UHC returns I did last year, yeah. but not one of them had to pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now I'll be down, you know, going from like like 30 last year down to probably three of our actual non-residents right. that, that have to file it right, this year. Right, right. You're talking federal. Fed, yeah, just the federal yeah. UHT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what else? What else are you? Uh, what else annoys you? I mean, just about the trust things. Right. So I sent out an email to ba every client. Right. As I said, just you know, here's some scenarios that you could have a trust where you might not realize it. Right. Do any of these apply? Right. And I've had clients come to me with stacks of financial uh, uh, reporting right. for these trust accounts they've had for their kids or for themselves. Right. Uh, you know, it's been around for 20, 25 years. The trust. The tr in trust accounts. Right, right. Why didn't you ever tell me about this? Were they making... Oh, were they making money? Was. was there any income? Oh, I had one. It was some some one of their their parents worked for a big uh, uh, a public company, a U.S. company. It was a Canadian operation, but right. he had he had been given shares, so he took some of those shares and put them in right. the grandchildren's name and 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 the child and the. The son's name. It, it, they were Canadian or they were? They're Canadian. Okay. But were the but investments was, Canadian or not? No. The uh, investments were foreign. So that's why you wouldn't see it. That's right. And it was it through a U.S. Uh, clearinghouse. Right. So nothing on the Canadian side. Right. But still, why, why you get tax slips? Don't you think <laughs> maybe send it to me? 25 years. Uh -huh. And all of these accounts are over $100,000. Right, right, right. But so I don't know what the cost base is. So now I've got to go back and calculate the cost base for right. 25 years for these things to see if there's a foreign reporting issue right. to do voluntary disclosure. And then uh, we have now three trusts right. uh, d that have to be uh, filed yeah. and none of the income was ever reported. So right. I don't know if CRA is going to go back and reassess. Right, right, right. Income Maybe voluntary disclosure. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're coming to the end of uh, today's episode. To tune in next time to our next episode, Ivan, thanks for your time today. It's been a good Always conversation. A oh, I know. Always. It is. Always. All we're right. We're going to go back and do some real work. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Take care.